Hello, and welcome to Meridian News Now. I'm Rachel Ramsey, and thank you for joining us. This week, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and her cabinet began their statewide small business summer tour in recognition of small businesses that have remained prominent during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Most recently, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilcrest visited Grand Rapids, one of four stops at regional small business summits statewide until August 9th. The tour is one of a number of initiatives put forward by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to enhance small businesses post-pandemic. So far, supporting over 25,000 companies and retaining 200,000 jobs. You can read more about the small business tour on hometv.net. CATA held a press conference on July 11th to discuss the new major route implementation. Beginning August 30th, Route 18 will bridge neighborhoods in Lansing, McLaren Greater Lansing, and East Lansing and Michigan State University. CEO of CATA, Bradley Funkhauser, talked about his hopes and goals for the new route. We do have neighborhoods and communities uh, beside each other. Transportation is that common thread, bringing communities together. But when we invest not only in service, but also capital like bus shelters and uh, other facilities, we want it to be part of the community that we represent. So um, we're thrilled about being able to get that input from the communities. Um, obviously, we want ridership. We want the bus used, and uh, we'll know pretty quick. I think the greatest uh, ability to adjust a route is through communication and not ridership numbers. I mean, it's like anything, supply and demand. If it's not good, people won't use it. But I'd rather have the conversation ahead of time uh, to make sure we're doing a good job. Route 18 will be known as the Capital City Crosstown and is the first major route implementation since August 2018. Summer is the perfect time for a vacation. However, it's important to stay safe while doing so. Home TV's Lucy Van Regenmorter has more. For many, a midsummer getaway is the perfect escape from everyday life. However, there are a few important safety tips to remember before you take off on your next vacation. First, always lock all the doors to your home before you leave. If possible, tell a trusted neighbor where you are going and to watch for any suspicious activity while you are away. Second, avoid distractions while on the road. That text can wait. Third, and most important, make sure to never leave a child unattended in a hot car. While it may seem okay for just a few moments, children's body temperatures rise three to five times faster than adults. As always, stay safe and happy travels. Thanks, Lucy, for those important safety tips. Gas prices are at an all-time high in Michigan, and Home TV's Lucy Van Regenmorter is live in the field to tell us more. Hey, thanks, Rachel. I'm here at Speedway at Grand River, where, as you can see, gas prices are noticeably higher than usual. This is the case for all gas stations in the area, as Michigan gas prices hit a new 2021 high last week at $3.21 a gallon for regular unleaded fuel. AAA Michigan reported this price is 13 cents more than this time last month and $1.06 more than this time last year. While they dropped by one cent to $3.20 on Tuesday, they are expected to rise throughout the end of the summer as the price of crude oil is also expected to rise. Adrian Woodland, spokesperson for AAA, predicted that these prices could remain well over $3 throughout the rest of the summer. In Maria Township, Lucy Van Order, Home TV. Back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Lucy. While these gas prices may be high, on this date in 2014, motorists in Michigan were paying an average of $3.64 a gallon. Home TV will keep you updated on these figures. 24% of Meridian Township Police Department officers are female. That is double the state and national averages of female officers at 12%, according to MLive. I sat down with some Meridian police officers to talk about being a female officer in a male-dominated workplace. The Meridian Township Police Department is home to many police officers. Meridian Township in particular has double the amount of female police officers than the state average. I'm Rachel Ramsey and I sat down with Captain Rick Grillo to discuss the above average number of female police officers in Meridian Township. We want to represent our community as well as we can um, and diversifying with uh, the number of males and female officers uh, is something that we really take a lot of pride in here. 
I talked with some of Meridian Township's female police officers to discuss their experience as a female officer in Meridian Township. It definitely has its challenges, but um, I don't think it's um, not too bad here at Meridian Township. You know, they treat you really well and that's a plus. Meridian Township has taught me a lot. Um, this is my first job as a police officer, so um, they've taught me everything. I've, they've made me grow so much and they've sent me to so many trainings to help me with different things and it's been a great experience working here. I think being a female police officer just um means being a good role model in the community you know there's other girls who would look up to me and want to be a female police officer someday so just making sure every day i set the best example for them in meridian township rachel ramsey for home tv meridian township police department is just one of many organizations looking to expand their diversity the ingham county court recently announced that they would be offering free copies of case records to those eligible for expungement Court clerk Barb Byram supported the move and was also able to do so with the help of the Clean Slate program, which was signed into law this past year and allows for the cleaning, clearing of records on a number of offenses. Our own Logan Sellis sat down with Byram this week to talk about the program, the moves made by the county, and more. Here's a segment from the sit down. I know you wrote in your uh, press release, there are some days you go home, you feel you have served the people well. Uh, I think it was, it was over 69 cases as far back as 1970. Yeah. Well, that's a lot to put in perspective. I mean, how does that feel on your end? Well, it's good because I know that these individuals that are, that are petitioned the court now to have their license, to have their record expunged are our neighbors. They're our family and they're our friends and they should have the right to gainful employment and good safe housing for their families and this can this having your record expunged can really um, elevate your your life logan's interview with barb as well as more information about the clean slate program can be found on our website hometv.net summertime in michigan means long days at the lake or by the pool friends and family should be cautious around water to avoid accidents home tv's katherine weddle has more on safety water for water there's nothing better than a boat day during a beautiful Michigan summer. However, safety should be any boater's number one priority. According to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, in 2020, there were 181 boating accidents reported. 33 of those ended in fatality, and 20 were the result of drowning. Drowning was reported as the cause of death in 79% of all fatalities, meaning four out of five people died from drowning. What's the best way to avoid drowning? Always wear your life jacket even the most experienced swimmers can make mistakes. In Meridian Township, Catherine Weddle, Home TV. American Red Cross recommends only swimming in designated areas supervised by lifeguards, always swimming with a buddy and never leaving children unattended in water. Ingham County Parks is seeking feedback from residents and any other interested parties as the part of Rex Parks and Recreation Master Plan update. Tim Morgan from Ingham County Parks talks about why it's important to get public input. Every five years we update our five-year master plan and it gives us kind of a, a compass um, of where we need to go, uh, the facilities that we need to either update or add to and uh, programming and staffing and anything else. Um, as far as uh, when it comes to what we provide in the way of recreation, parks and recreation services to the public. So it is, that's the critical importance of gathering public input because, because they're public parks, um, it's important. We saw about one point, just under 1.5 million visitors last year. So it's important that we hear from uh, as many of them as we can, as far as what their desires, their needs, their wants, um, what they might be interested in moving forward, not only what we're doing well, but what we're doing not so well, or if there's things that we don't offer now that they'd like to see, we need to know that too, so we can plan for it. Residents can complete the survey online at the website on the screen, or attend one of the three in-person open house dates on July 20th, 22nd, and 26th. Governor Whitmer has declared July as Parks and Recreation Month. This proclamation aims to raise awareness in communities about local parks and recreation. I sat down with Meridian Township's Parks and Recreation Director, Luann Maisner, to talk about plans for July. 
I'm Rachel Ramsey and I am here with Luann Maisner, the Director of Parks and Recreations for Meridian Township. We are here to talk about July being Parks and Recreation Month and what that means. Thank you for joining me, You bet, thank you. So to start off, what is Parks and Recreation Month? Well, Parks and Recreation, it's a celebration of all the great things that go on in communities. Parks and Recreation Departments play a vital role in communities here, like here in Meridian Township, but nationwide. Mm -hmm. And then how did um, you get started working in Parks and Recreation? I've always was very active um, growing up, very sports oriented. And uh, when I went into college and you're trying to determine what you want to do, and um, it really Parks and Recreation just seemed to be the best fit for me. And so my degree was in Parks and Recreation Administration with a minor in business. And uh, yeah, and it's been the greatest career choice I could have ever made. America has been celebrating July as Parks and Recreation Month since 1985. The full interview with Luann is available on the Home TV website at hometv.net. The summertime is full of outdoor adventures, and the best way to ensure a successful summer is to stay cautious of hot temperatures. Here are some tips on how to beat the summer heat. Beating the heat in the summertime can be hard, but it is also important. During these months, high temperatures increase the risk for heat stroke and other dangerous problems like dehydration. Here are some tips for how to beat the heat. Stay hydrated. Six to eight ounces of water a day is the average recommended amount to stay hydrated. Wear sunscreen. Sunburn affects your body's ability to cool itself. So during the summer, applying sunscreen will help protect you outdoors. When leaving your car unattended, children and dogs should never be left unsupervised, not even for a little bit of time. Cracking your windows or opening a sunroof offers little relief to children or pets. Leaving dogs and children in cars can lead to heat stroke. Before leaving your car, look before you lock. This saying reminds you to look in the back seat and throughout the vehicle to make sure your child or pet isn't still in the vehicle. All of these tips help decrease the risk for heat stroke and beat the summer heat. In Meridian Township, Rachel Ramsey for Home TV. Summer heat can cause dehydration, sun poisoning, and heat strokes. So staying on top of heat prevention is a good way to keep yourself safe in hot weather. The Harris Nature Center is holding a guided walk and fireside talk on July 31st at 7 p.m. Naturalists at Harris Nature Center will give a guided tour and then talk about the seven principles to leaving no trace. The cost for this program is $5, and for more information or to register, call 517-349-3866 or email hnc at meridian.mi.us. This past Wednesday, Taylor Taylor performed at the Meridian Township Farmer's Market. The set included covers along with some original work of her previous three EPs, and she even played some of her new work from her upcoming EP. Performing here is really cool. I didn't expect like all of this. There's a lot going on here. There's a cool structure. There's a stage behind me. There's all these vendors. There's a playground. And there's a lot of open space for people to come and enjoy the concerts that happen here. The summer concert series will continue every Wednesday throughout the months of July and August at the Farmer's Market located at the Green Pavilion. The concerts are free to everyone and there is a new musical guest each week. This week's guest will be Joe Wright, who will be performing tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. At Wednesday's Meridian Township Farmer's Market, Stacks Barbecue is serving up food for vendors and visitors. Home TV's Elena Cugino talked with the food truck owners to check Every Wednesday at the Meridian Township Farmer's Market, visitors can find father and son duo Jay and Devin Daniels serving fresh food out of the Stacks Barbecue food truck. The food truck is a Lansing-based company, and Daniels is no amateur with repairing smoked meats. For the last probably 15 years or so, I've just kind of been trying to perfect the barbecue game and, and, and working on smoking meats. That's my thing. Daniels said that almost all food trucks are locally owned. So even though they might not be from your community. You're supporting a local business, so, you know, a homeowner, a, a, a small business. 
Um, so that is a huge thing. Regular customers and vendors at the market, Ray and Kate Jackson, said they have Stacks Barbecue every week. Uh, well, they're the biggest vendor here on Wednesdays, and we're vendors here on Wednesday as well. So yeah, but it's, it's dinner for us. Offering pulled pork, brisket, and more, Daniel said Stacks Barbecue is going for a Midwest smoke with Southern flavor. It's just been very rewarding to be able to say this is our own business and that we're supplying such a good product to the people and people really like us. Daniels bought the food truck in October of 2020 and he said they have no intention of slowing down. We are gonna have a home base on the west side very soon. So at some point in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to be one place all the time when we're not at the Meridian Markets or other events where we've been going. In Meridian Township, Elena Cajun. Great Home place. TV. Stacks Barbecue can be found at the market on Wednesdays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. On Thursday, July 8th, Capital Area District Libraries hosted an ice cream event at Cheesy D's. Now that the library is open, Cattle wanted to take an opportunity to give back to the community. So with the help of local businesses, Cheesy D's offered two free soft serves to those who presented their library card at the event. Along with celebrating the reopening, Cattle wanted to, do, to remind town, the township of summer reading programs. This year's theme is Tales and Tales. Head librarian of the Cattle Hazlitt branch, Tom Moore, was happy to express his appreciation for the support the library has received from their members in the community. The library is open again, and we want to get back out into the community and reconnect with our members and show them how much we appreciate their support um, through all of these, you know, tough past year and a half, 16 months or so. Find out more information about the library in this event, visit www.cattle.org. That's all for today's episode of Meridian News Now. Remember, you can stay up to date with Township News by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, hometv.net. I'm Rachel Ramsey. Thanks for watching and have a great day.